Good afternoon and welcome to Investor Schooling Live, coming to you from Investor Schooling Headquarters in Langhorn, Pennsylvania. I'm Phil Falcone here with Larry Steinhaus. We are the founders of Investor Schooling. We teach people about real estate investing and stock option investing. Call us with questions now or at any time during the show, 855-939-1137. That's 855-939-1137. Yes, we're a live program. We don't record an hour of radio time and then run it for 52 weeks. We <laughs> actually know this business. And we're capable of answering people's questions because we do it for real. We're a live program. Guess what else we are? Our school is open. We're not closed for COVID-19 and the 0.6% of 1% of people who are actually even have this, uh, this so-called pandemic. Investor Schooling is located in Langhorne, Pennsylvania, serving the Philadelphia area in a real brick-and-mortar building. That's correct. We're real local guys from Philadelphia area. And uh, we are available to our students a minimum of two nights per week. Learn this business from people who live it every day. Yo, Larry, what's up, man? All right, Phil. I got a question for you, Phil. Uh, you know, the other night we went out. And we left on a bad note, man. I want to know if you're still mad at me. Well, I've been mad at you from the day I met you. Really? What did I, what, you know, <laughs> you always throw me off, man. I try to goof on you and you, you get right at, man, you come right back. That's really good. I don't even know what to say. So Phil was mad at me the other day because I pissed off a friend of ours. Do we want to talk about this on the air? I think we should. I think it's kind of funny. Don't, don't say who he is, though, what, of course. What, what do you, uh, you you want to turn this radio show into a therapy session? Yes, I do, actually. I think it, it, I think it would be great. I don't think I can help you. I mean, uh, <laughs> usually my method of helping people involves violence, and I don't think you want to, you don't want to go through my kind of therapy. Well, that was the violence that we were talking about the other day. You you, you got so upset at me at dinner. You you actually you actually uh, yelled at me at dinner the other night, and I was very hurt. Hmm. Well, uh. That's unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I guess, I guess I couldn't take them down the rabbit hole. I guess we'll have to go somewhere else. <laughs> well, why don't we try this? Why don't we talk about some of these uh, real estate things we're going to discuss today? We can do that. Yeah. Is that what we do on this show? Yeah. We talk about real estate and stock options. We don't talk about if our feelings are hurt. Oh, all right. Uh, so before you guys, before you do that, let's remind everybody they can call in at 855-939-1137. So if you're in your car or if you, even if you aren't watching on Facebook Live, you can call in right now, 855-939-1137. I will tell you that we record this show on Sunday at 3 o'clock. So if you're listening at Sunday at 3 o'clock or on, then you would be able to call in. Also, if you call in at one of our other times that you hear us on the radio, if it's a, another station, you can call in as well, 855-939-1137. However, we might not be live, but I promise you somebody will answer the phone to talk to you if you have a question. Lots of times it's me, so if you have a question, or a technical question, or something you want to know about, you can call 855-939-1137. So call in right now. All right, Phil, go ahead. So a couple of topics we have today. We're going to talk about, is buy and hold the best way to get rich? Wow, that's interesting. You're going to want to listen to that. We're also going to talk about what is the best entity to hold real estate investments. And uh, I have a couple of opinions on that, as does Larry. Another thing that we do here is we give stock option picks of the week. So we're going to do that at the end of the show. We're going to give you some stocks or stock options. We do stock options, but you can do you can take our picks and invest in stocks if you wish. Although you should come to our school at 7 o'clock on Thursday night and learn a little bit about options for how much is our school cost, Larry, on Thursday night? So if they come Thursday night, it actually will cost them um, um, nothing. It's free. Oh. They can attend for free. Isn't that's, that awesome? That's a pretty good price. Yeah, and actually, it's a real class. And this is important. You know, we're not, you know, there, there are a lot of places out there that they'll, they'll do some, uh, I don't know, whatever, full night sales pitch or whatever. We're not doing that at all. We're actually, you're going to sit in an actual class that people s paid for. Um, you may be in the middle of a lesson. It doesn't really matter. But we want you to audit the class. We want you to see what we do. We want you to understand that what we teach you is real stuff, and we're not going to try to sell you anything. In fact, if you wanted to, we if you liked it, we're going to invite you back to a second class. We're going to invite you back to a Monday Mastermind meeting. And if you like the Monday Mastermind meeting, then if you want to talk about becoming a student, you can talk about becoming a student. We only want successful students. It isn't about the money for us. However, we are capitalists. 
So we do charge for our school if you decide you want to become a student, but come for free. At the absolute worst that happens, you'll learn something, and you'll learn something that you can use the next day, I promise you. So we also had a couple of questions emailed in to us. Uh, one guy wrote, does investor schooling travel? <clears throat> does investor schooling travel? Yeah, we went on a cruise right before COVID. Does that count? <laughs> I'm not even sure if I understand the question, but okay. <laughs> I, I, I think what he meant was, would we, you know, do do we do presentations out on the road? Oh, okay. Are For we, like a real estate group or we, something. Are we going to answer that now? Since this yeah, is I mean, I, I'd say the answer is, yeah, we might do that. If, you, uh, if you've if you got a big group and you'd like us to come out and do a presentation, we'd love to do it. Okay, we got a couple other questions. One is, do you guys invest in New Jersey? The answer to that is, uh, we'll get back to that later. Uh, <laughs> only when we absolutely have to. Only yeah. when we, we have too much money in our pocket and we want to pay like massive amounts of real estate yeah, taxes. Yeah, right, exactly. Or we're selling a property and we want to pay an exit fee. Okay, we but I still it. like New Jersey better than Philadelphia. Why? Because you don't have to get seven different licenses to become a real estate investor. Uh, yeah, well, okay, I'd agree with you there. Uh, another guy asked, does investor schooling partner with students? That's a great question. Are we going to answer that now? We can answer that later as well. Well, we can answer it later. These are questions yeah, we can hit on the part. show. Okay. Sure. So back to uh, hurting your feelings. You know, I got something I'll share with oh, you. Oh, no. Here we go. So, so I, I, one I, got, the, I got him primed now. One of the guys uh, that you uh, yelled at, and I, I'm sure you can't keep track of all the guys you yelled <laughs> at. Are you saying I have a, 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 a terrible, um, uh, yeah, <laughs> so one of anger, the, anger problem? One of the guys that you yelled at, he asked me a question. He said, he was talking about you, and he said, where do these people come from? And I said, well, there's a couple in Milwaukee having them all. Say that one more time. <laughs> he asked me, like, where do these people come from? Referring to you okay. and people like you. Okay. And I said, there's a couple in Milwaukee having them all. Yeah, okay. I, it was a stretch. It was good, but it was a stretch. I, I don't know. You, you can, I, I think you needed a better delivery on that one. Well, he thought it was funny. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, We're, all right. Let's let, let, hey, do me a favor. Hey, John, do me a favor. Can you st can you play the starting music over? Because we we this has been the worst show so far, and uh, so we we just need to start all over again. You want to start all over again, Phil? No. Uh, let, why don't we go right into the first topic? <laughs> okay. So, is buy and hold the best way to get rich? What do you think, Larry? I'm going with an absolute yes. It is the best way to get rich. Now, there's a di actually, actually, that's not even true. The best way to get rich, see, rich and wealthy are two different words, and a lot of people confuse them. So, wealthy is building up a nest egg of of, uh, of assets that you can live off after a, uh, uh, you know for a long time. So, wealthy is what buy and hold will make you. Getting rich now, getting rich. If you think about it, getting rich is really the concept of I don't know being able to buy a Corvette or a Mercedes. So people can be rich, but they may not be wealthy. I happen to be both, so it's okay. But th th that's the difference between wealth and rich. So the answer to the question is yes. Buy and hold is the best way to get wealthy. Um, getting rich is nice. You could be rich for a year. You could be rich for two years, ten years, five years, whatever. But having long-term sustained money that you can spend for a long time, that's wealthy, and that is what buy and hold will do for you. What do you think, Phil? Well, uh, people have asked me over the years, uh, people who just come right out and say it, are you rich? And I usually say, it depends on your definition of yeah, rich. Really. Right? What do you th think rich is? Is it a million dollars? Is it making a million dollars a year? Is it $10 million? What is it? I don't know what your definition of rich is. I know what mine is. And it's none of you, the answer is none of your damn business. <laughs> so you know, <laughs> <laughs> so I actually have this thing. Like, so you, you ever notice that uh, when somebody says, "Hey, what's old?" Old is uh, to me, old is always twenty years older than I am, right? So when I was twenty, old was forty. Now old is seventy six. <clears throat> so it's the same thing with being rich. Being rich to me is always twenty million dollars more than I have. So I'm always looking at the people who have twenty million dollars more than me, going, "Oh, those are the people I want to be like now." I caught up to some of them, but now I got to catch up to the other ones. You know what I mean? And right. that's what that's what it is to me. Well, uh, so is buy and hold the best way to get rich? I think it is, and the reason why is because, well, I've been a real estate investor for thirty-one years, and if I look back at all the different strategies that are that are exercised by real estate investors, I would have to tell you that the guys who are the wealthiest 
are guys who bought buildings, sold none of them or very, very few of them, and kept buying and kept almost everything they've ever bought in their lives. It is practically impossible not to become extremely wealthy if you do that. For example, one of the things I was talking about Thursday night in class, if you were here, you would have you would have seen this. And they could have came for free, too. They could have come for free, yeah. There you go. Free. So uh, I highlighted a house that was purchased in 1969 for $30,000. $30,000 in 1969 was probably a lot of money, and the people who bought this house were aggressive uh, business owners who really sh- put their neck put their necks out to buy a house for $30,000. A row home in, say, northeast Philadelphia was selling for about $5,000 in 1969. So to spend six times that much on a house is a gutsy move. But nonetheless, this family did that. They bought a house in 1969 for $30,000. So after 50 years had passed, 50 years had just passed, we were examining this house, and we came up with a value of $425,000 for this house. If it had hit $480,000, and it didn't hit four eighty, dollars I'm valuing the house right now at about four twenty-five. dollars but if it had hit four hundred and eighty. dollars it would have doubled four times. So they bought it for 30, it doubled to 60, that's the first time. Then it doubled to 120, that's the second time. Then it doubled to 240, that's the third time. If it had made it to 480, it would have doubled four times in 50 years. That's pretty good. So imagine an asset that you can buy that you don't even need to live in. Somebody else is going to pay for it. Who's going to pay for it, Larry? The tenant is going to pay for it. That's my favorite part about investing in real estate. Right. Someone else is going to live in the property, and they're going to pay you rent. You're going to make a profit off that rent, and you're going to take some of that profit, and you're going to reinvest it back in the property to fix up the property and keep it looking nice and fix the roof and put in the things that it needs so that the tenants continue to pay, and everybody's happy. And you so you're going to take ugly houses and make them? Beautiful. Have you ever heard Phil do it? All right, I love it. I'm going to teach you how to buy ugly houses and make them beautiful. All right, so in this scenario, imagine if you had bought 50 houses or 10 houses or 100 houses or 200 houses. Imagine the wealth that you would have if whatever money you invested in these properties, and frankly, the money you invested in the property, the 30 grand, This family I'm referring to, they didn't put up $30,000 in cash. They probably put up $3,000 in cash and borrowed the rest. But yet the thing still doubled in value. So they bought it for $30, and it doubled in value almost four times. That basically means that over a 100-year period, a house would double in value at least seven times. At least seven times, maybe eight. Now, I know a real estate investor is pretty smart. He says real estate doubles every 10 years. I would tell you that is not true in the last couple of 10 years. but It's an average, though, Phil. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. But uh, I think it might be just slightly a little high, that's all. I think it's a little high. It's probably a little bit less than that number right now. It's probably more like 7.5 or something like that. But anyway, so you invest money in these things. Somebody else pays all the bills. You simply own it, and voila. You have just one house that's worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, $425,000 only 50 years later. But I would bet that there's somebody out there going, yeah, but how can I buy 100 houses? I only have $5 in the bank. I'll tell you how you do it. You come to investor schooling and you learn some of these strategies that we use here, using creative financing, teach you how to buy houses with none of your own money, teach you how to use other people's money, teach you how to use private lenders' money, hard money lenders' and all kinds of other strategies that you may or may not be aware of. People still don't believe that they can do that. They still don't believe that they can buy a house for no money, get money at closing. Uh, it's, it's bizarre that, that there's so many people out there that I talk to that, oh, you can't really do that. You know, you, you've been doing this for, for, for 38 years. You know how to do it. Well, I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm going to teach you. But the idea is you can do it. It's not as hard as you think. And the, the funny part is people don't understand the concept of private lenders. Private lenders are not... 
not banks. They're not people who go, hey, I got a million dollars. Let me give you some. These are people you go and you find and you talk to them. They're your friends. They're your neighbors. They're your relatives. And you say, listen, I got a really good real estate deal. You've got money sitting in an IRA making 2%. Let me teach you. Let, let me get you seven or eight percent of that money. I, I just did this actually. One of one of my friends. We just did it. He has money. He was sitting around. He was getting like four or five percent interest on his money in a good year. I offered him seven and a half. He goes, "Is that guaranteed?" I said, "It is from me." And now he's going to get seven and a half percent out of uh, for you know for the next five years with an automatic renewal if he decides he wants to renew it. I don't understand why everyone doesn't get how to do this. It's very easy to do. It probably all goes back to limiting beliefs Absolutely. and what they think they're capable of doing. And everybody, I'll tell you what, most of the people that I meet are afraid to call sellers, afraid to call lenders. They're just afraid because they want to learn, ev- they want to know every single thing before they make that phone call. The real estate business doesn't work that way. The real estate business is kind of more closer to monopoly. It, you, Someone hands you dice, you roll the dice, you land on Park Place. You say to yourself, hmm, I got enough money to buy this. What should I do? I think I'll buy it. And you <laughs> let the chips fall where they may. All right, so why don't we do this? Why don't we take a little break, two minutes, and when we come back, we're going to talk about what is the best entity to hold real estate investments in. We'll be back in two minutes. Hi, I'm Phil Falcone from Investorschooling.com. I'm inviting you to a complimentary class in Langhorn this Thursday night at 7 p.m. I will teach you how to buy ugly houses and make them beautiful. As a bonus, we will also teach you stock option investing. So get your butt to this meeting, 7 p.m. this Thursday night, Langhorn, 215-876-3002, InvestorSchooling.com. Hey, everybody. It's Larry Sinus from InvestorSchooling.com. You heard my partner, Phil Falcone, tell you why you should be there this Thursday night to learn about real estate investing and learn about stock options trading. We're telling you right now, you will make more money than you've ever made in your entire life if you learn these two skills. Be there this Thursday night at 7 o'clock in our Langhorn headquarters. Go to InvestorSchooling.com. Pull over right now. Take out your phone and go to InvestorSchooling.com. RSVP right now. InvestorSchooling.com. See you Thursday. I'm Phil Falcone from Executex Suites. I got a question for you. What do you get for $4.95 a month at Executex Suites? You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone number. You get the fax number. You get the internet. You get two full-time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you, whether you're in the office, in your car, or at home sleeping on a couch. You get the conference rooms. You get the mailboxes. You get the printer, the copy, the scanner. You get the janitorial service, the utilities, and free coffee. I know it's hard to believe that you could get all those things for $495 a month. But it's true. 67 Buck Road in Huntington Valley, Executech Suites. Give us a call, 215-942-7701, 215-942-7701. Hey, everybody, it's Larry Sinus from InvestorSchooling.com. And I'm Phil Falcone from InvestorSchooling.com. Hey, what are we going to teach him this Thursday night, Phil? We're going to teach you how to invest in real estate so you can build a basis to get rich. And I promise I'm going to teach you stock options. So go to InvestorSchooling.com and RSVP right now. Right, Phil? We've been in this business for 30 years. We have amazing amounts of information to share with you. Get your butt to this meeting this Thursday night in Langhorn. InvestorSchooling.com. All right. Welcome back. Welcome back to Investor Schooling Live. Hey, so if you guys didn't know, we actually transmit from our we actually transmit from our headquarters. We actually have built a studio down here that is fena- phenomenal. If you guys want to come visit us on a Thursday night and take a look at the studio, just grab Phil or I. We'll take it downstairs and we'll take it, we'll l- let you see the studio. It's actually pretty impressive. You can hear the audio quality is pretty good, and we're doing a great job. We actually you can, hey, we actually have a producer out in the studio. Hey, John, say hello to everybody. John, you there? Hello. Huh. Hey, he just says hello. That's hysterical. So John is our producer. He's actually in Philadelphia, and we connect to him via the internet, actually. And we have a whole conversation where we, we can have 
conversation with him. We can have a conversation with callers. So if you want to call in right now, you can call in at 855-939-1137, and John will answer the phone, and you can tell him what you want to talk about, and we will be more than happy to talk to you about it. What's it's, that number, Larry? It's 855-939-1137. And if you're listening to a replay of this show, feel free to call the number, 855-939-1137, and we promise you we will be able to answer your question at that time. So what do we got coming up here, Phil? We got we had an interesting uh, topic we wanted to talk about, right? Yeah, the next topic is, what is the best entity to hold real estate investments? All right, so this one is a, a really good question because it comes up a lot. And especially if you've gone to real estate classes or any of the, or any of the I don't know, I hate to call them sales pitch classes, whatever you want to call them, or maybe even some of the local clubs, everyone will tell you to buy real estate in an LLC. Well, they're kind of not exactly correct. Here, here's, the, here's what they're trying to teach you, and, and what they're trying to teach you is correct, but I'm going to teach you something a little bit better. So an LLC is a great way to isolate yourself from your asset or your real estate or your business, for example. So if you have a business, you want to open up an LLC. This way, if you, if you get sued or something happens, they have to sue your LLC because the LLC was actually the business holder, not you. So a lot of people are saying, okay, let's buy real estate in an LLC, which does make some sense sometimes. And here's where I'm going to tell you not to do it. So if you have your 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 real estate in LLC, the biggest mistake that people make is they'll take one LLC. Let's say it's uh, I don't know. Let's say it's uh, Investor Schooling uh, Properties Holdings LLC, right? And we want to hold our properties in this LLC. And we put property ABC, uh, 123 Main Street in here, and, and 456 Main Street, and 678 Main Street, all in the same LLC. The problem is if somebody gets injured in 123 Main Street, they now have access to sue the other two properties as well. In other words, they're suing the LLC, which owns all the properties. So if you had, I don't know, $100,000 equity in property three, and they're suing you from property one and has no equity in it, well, they can get that $100,000 equity out of the other property or even possibly own all three properties if the lawsuit goes in a certain direction, which is really bad. I'm not a big fan of that. <laughs> so now the other choice is you can take every single property and put it in its own LLC, which makes sense, right? So now you're going to have an LLC for every single property. So 123 Main Street would have an LLC. 456 Main Street would have its own LLC, et cetera, et cetera. The problem with that is now you have to do tax returns on every single one of those LLCs. Now, what we teach is we teach to buy properties in trust. Some people call this a land trust. I, I, we actually use what we call a personal property trust, but it's still a land trust for all practical purposes. And what we do in this with this system is we actually buy the property in a trust. So we call it 123 Main Street Trust, for example, if we were buying 123 Main Street. And, and Phil and I have uh, different uh, ideas on what we should name the prop, name the trust. But just for example, let's say we call it 123 Main Street Trust. We buy the property. There are three parts to a trust. One is the entity itself, which is the actual trust, which is actually a piece of paper. And once you wrap your head around the fact that you can buy – that a piece of paper can be the owner of a property. The piece of paper is the owner of a property. Now it becomes phenomenal what you can do with this piece of paper. You, you can now become the trustee, which is the controller of the piece of paper. So the trustee tells the piece of paper what to do because the piece of paper – or tells the rest of the world what the piece of paper wants to do because the piece of paper can't speak, of course. And there's something called a beneficiary, and the beneficiary is the person who the piece of paper is being held for or the trust is being in trust for. Now, here's something interesting that most people don't know. The trustee and the beneficiary could be exactly the same person. So let's go back to the original scenario. Somebody sues you at 123 Main Street. Now they're suing 123 Main Street Trust. They're not suing Larry Steinhaus. They're not suing uh, whatever properties, uh, LLC. They're suing 123 Main Street Trust. Now let's say it's a legitimate li lawsuit. The trust becomes isolated from the LLC, and it also becomes isolated from you. In fact... For them to sue you, what they would have to do is they would have to get a court order to find out who the beneficiary is because as the trustee, you're entrusted to not tell anyone who the beneficiary is, which is kind of neat because now the lawyer writes you letters to say, uh, my client fell, broke his arm on 123 Main Street, you own it, and we want to, you know, we, we need to find out who the beneficiary is so we can sue them. Well, you can't do that because I'm the trustee and I'm telling you that you have to get a court order to find out who the beneficiary is. It would cost the lawyer probably five to ten thousand dollars to get go to court to find out who the beneficiary is now here's the interesting part they can go to court they can find out who the beneficiary is but when they find out that the beneficiary is an llc 
Now they have to go to court again to find out who the members of the LLC are, whether the LLC is me or somebody else or something else. And in fact, sometimes we, we teach to do serial LLCs or serial trusts, so it gets really, really hard to be sued. And that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to avoid being sued. Now, there is another way to avoid being sued, which is, of course, having insurance. And I highly recommend you have insurance on all your properties, including liability insurance. However, this will protect you, and it protects your LLC. In fact, most of my LLCs that, have, that are there for properties are empty. There's really nothing in them. So you can easily... Uh, you, you know, you can't sue the LLC because this LLC doesn't own the properties. The LLC is the beneficiary of the properties. I think that was uh, pretty clear. What do you think, Phil? Yeah, it was good. And, uh, you know, there's so many other benefits to using trust. You can you can buy a boat in a trust. You can buy a dog in a trust. You can buy a car in a trust. You can create a trust for uh, how much money does it cost to create a trust? Well, so uh, typically an attorney might cost you anywhere from, I don't know, 1500 to 2500 bucks to create a trust. Now, we have on our website, we have sample trust paperwork that people can use, and it happens to be the paperwork that Phil and I use when we create a trust. The interesting part, too, and what you start to understand that is the second you speak the name of the trust, it exists. You don't even need the paperwork. You just need the paperwork to back it up. So if i buying a property in 123 Main Street Trust, I'm going to go to see a property in 123 Main Street, right, and I want to buy the property, and I want to buy the 123 Main Street Trust. I don't even need to create the trust before I go. The trust is created the second I write it as the, as the buyer, which is also kind of kind of neat too here's another thing that's important about trust and i think it, it should be addressed too uh for people who are getting older people who want to leave their properties to their children and not have them not have them taken away by a nursing home medicaid will pay for your nursing home if you have no assets now if you have let's say you had two or three rental properties in your in your portfolio and you get sick and you have to go into a nursing home for whatever reason if you decided to sell those properties uh, the nursing home will take all the money from those properties until that runs out, and when that runs out, then you can go on Medicaid. Now, you just elim you just you just basically destroyed the whole concept of leaving money for your children. You actually gave it to the, to the nursing home, but if you own the property, that's when that's what when it will happen. But if you don't own the property, for example, the piece of paper called the trust owns the property. Now, what will happen is the Medi Medicaid will see that you own nothing. And that's really nice. You could make the beneficiary of your trust your children. So if anything happens to you, they get it w upon your death. It actually avoids probate. It goes right to them, and they fire you, or actually you're no longer there. And uh, that will be the end of it. So real quick, we had somebody who put up on Facebook. They said, I was told an irrevocable trust is best. Is that true? It is not true. Uh, an irrevocable trust is used mostly only for estate planning. And you want to be careful that you get a revocable trust, a trust that can be terminated at any time, and the beneficiary can be changed at any time. An irrevocable trust is used only for a specific estate planning needs. So there's a difference between what we're talking about and a difference between what your estate planner may be talking about with an irrevocable trust. But be really careful, because if you create an irrevocable trust, it is irrevocable. If you decided that you want to leave all your children, I don't know, a million dollars when they're 15 or 16 years old, and when they when and you're still around, and 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 they become 25 and they have a serious problem, uh, who knows? It could be a drug problem, it could be an alcohol problem, or it could be a serious health problem. And you don't want Medicaid to get their money. You want to be really careful that you when you've created an irrevocable trust. So don't don't make the mistake of of mistaking the purpose of the revocable trust for irrevocable trust. Thank you, Kendall. We appreciate that question on Facebook. And uh, if anybody else wants to call in or leave a question on Facebook, feel free to do that. You can call in at 855-939-1137. I love the topic of trusts. I actually really have, uh, have uh, I, I'm fascinated by it. When I learned it, I had such a blast learning it, and I just keep going on and on and finding more and more things that are great with trust. I actually have I have conversations with estate planning attorneys sometimes, and I explain to them how I'm using trust, and they're like, wow, that's a really good idea. And I find it fascinating that they're not using it the way we're using it. So right. why don't we uh, answer some of these questions? Sure, let's do it. Okay, so does investor schooling travel? So, th so I guess we're going to have to go back to what our definition of traveling is, which is... <laughs> which is doing seminars. Yeah, we, we do seminars all the time, but we're not necessarily doing seminars. So people will invite us to their classes. They'll, they'll invite us to our classes all the time. They'll invite us 
uh, to whatever, like a real estate meeting. We have a couple of good friends who do them in Philadelphia, who do them in New Jersey. I actually go to California quite often, and I speak in California about uh, buying properties with no money. I've been in Boston speaking. I've been in New York speaking. So, yeah, the answer is, uh, you know, Phil and I travel. Investor schooling, basic, I guess it, I, I guess if we represent investor schooling, I guess we, we do travel, right? I would so say that's, that uh, that's what the question was about. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we got a caller. We got a guy named Sal on the line. Hey Sal, why don't you uh, why don't you come on and tell us what you uh, no what your money. question is? I've been in Boston speaking. Yeah, hey Larry, hey. how you doing? Um, yeah, my man. question was, I I actually was at your class Thursday, and you talked about the trusts and everything, and how you know Excellent. Medicaid did do a five year look back. Oh, I know. On I know what Sal so is. Huh? Hey, yeah. hey Sal, I know what Sal is, but you got to turn your radio down, or or you're going to get confused. Oh, I'm sorry. Away. Yeah, that's right. Uh-oh. You won't be the first person. You to do hear it. me now? I can hear you. Sure. Okay. Oh, all right. Yeah, well, my question was, I know you, you made with the trust, uh, so that I have a five-year look back. How do you right. protect your personal money in the bank? What should that be under? Okay, so the best thing to do is if you have any, first of all, if you have any substantial money in a the bank, then we need yeah. to have a serious conversation. Because you should never have any substantial money in a bank because the bank is going to give you point zero 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 one percent interest on that money. So if you're holding substantial money in a bank, you're making a mistake. So a couple of things you want to do well, is, to- you know, go ahead. So well, any money, IRA, any money anywhere, could, could they track that? Well, so it depends. It, they, can, they, can, they can, but you have to decide where your money's going to be. So if your money's in real estate, you're, you're – uh, you are now your, your money's in the trust, so it's it's you know involved in that real estate. If you have a yes. an IRA, it's most for most part it's untouchable, but the the, oh, it force, is. the force distributions will be touchable. So you want to you want to be careful with that too. So you have to start to plan your life in a way so that the government can't get much of your money or people can't get much of your money. That's what we teach. And and by the way, Sal, you've been a student now for a month, right? Yes. So why don't you tell everybody out there what your experience is so far? Oh, it's great. I, I am doing all right with the stock options. Um, I'm actually, uh, the school is, I've been actually looking for a school like this for a long time. And, um, you know, I've been watching Phil and Larry's videos, and, and um, they're really great. I mean, I'm learning a lot, and um, I'm, I'm up about probably about uh, 3500 already in stock options. That's fantastic. Uh, which is in a month. You know, I was pretty... Uh, Larry does a great job explaining how to how to buy and sell the options. You know that was pretty caught on to that. And now I'm just looking to start doing some wholesale deals. You know, and um, you know I'm 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 ready. I'm sending out my mailers and uh, you know listening to Phil and Larry really uh, you know works really well. You know what's funny about what uh, you I said? I definitely you recommend said, the school. Cool. Sal, you know what's funny about what you said? You said. This is a school I've been looking for. <laughs> that's our That's slogan. Slogan. You're the only ones, dude, the only ones that ever I was learning that. You don't can't learn this kind of stuff anywhere. <laughs> yeah, you know, I but mean, the, but the, let me let me explain it to you. The slogan for our school is investor schooling. This is the school you've been waiting for. And you said yeah, this exactly. is the school I've been looking for. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. You can't find this. You can't learn about this kind of stuff in college or nowhere. Nobody teach any of this. And well, I've been you, looking you could, for you it on call Facebook. call up uh, Harvard and ask them if, if they have a class on real estate investing, but I doubt anybody there actually knows anything about it. <laughs> no, <laughs> exactly. no. Exactly. No, not at all. This is a business. you got to live it every day in order to understand it. Yeah, or definitely, hang around definitely. With people like investor schooling who can teach you this business. Very cool, man. Yeah, hey, we, definitely. We so, we so appreciate the call. Let's uh, let's see if there's any other calls out there. Thanks, Sal. We'll talk to you uh, you Thursday. You got it. I'll see you on the Mastermind tomorrow night. Sounds great, man. Bye, right, guys. So, uh, see you. So, do you guys invest in New Jersey? What do you like about investing in Jersey, Larry? What do I like about investing in Jersey? Yeah. <clears throat> do you notice that it's taken me a long time to answer the question? Okay, so what do well I like about investing in Jersey? Why don't you ask me what I like about investing well, in New Jersey? All right. Okay, Phil, what do you like about investing in Jersey? Nothing. Yeah, right, exactly. No. I think I think that could, we kind of had the same answer, right? Okay, so here's the funny part. I did find two or three pretty excellent deals in New Jersey recently. So although I, uh, I'm not a fan of New Jersey, mostly because of their, their anti-gun rules, like I'm a licensed to carry a, per, uh, a handgun in Pennsylvania. But if I cross over the bridge, I can go to jail for two years. Two years yeah, just for having a gun. It's just insane. because you wanted, to, you wanted to 
use your Second Amendment right. Yeah, that's insane. So that's a problem for me because what happens to me a lot is um, I'll be in Philadelphia. I'll be in downtown Philadelphia looking at some houses, and somebody will call me and say, hey, Phil, can you come over and take a look at my house? I'm over in uh, you know Cherry Hill, and I drive right over the bridge forgetting that I got a couple of weapons in a car, and I'm like, oh, man, I'm risking like two years of my life. I got to turn around and go back. Right. I can't tell you how many times I was like unloading clips and throwing the bullets out the convertible, you know, uh, because every bullet was uh, another like thousand dollar fine. I got to tell you a funny story about that. So Go ahead. My tell. neighbor, my <laughs> neighbor wanted to borrow my truck. You know, so you know, we, have, I, we have a big truck. The school has a big truck. It says investor schooling on it. And he needed to pick up some furniture for his daughter. And he wanted to borrow my truck to pick up the furniture and bring it to her, her house in New Jersey. And you know, I carry a a clip in my in, in my truck, you know, in the glove compartment. It has fifteen rounds in it, just in case anything, whatever. You know, so I have a clip in there. And the night before, I I gave him my keys, and I remembered the clip was in it. So in the morning, and he had to go to Jersey to do this. He had to go to Jersey to to pick up his daughter's furniture. So in the morning, I had planned on going to the truck, taking the clip out, just in case. I mean, the guy gets the guy gets pulled over. He opens up the glove box, and he finds that clip in there, and they're hollow points, too, which is really bad in New Jersey. Yeah, I think that's like uh, adds time to the oh, sentence. Oh, it does. It does, yeah. right? So I get up in the morning. I, you know, I finish my workout. I go upstairs, and my truck's gone. I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> he already took it. <laughs> Well, I hope he's not listening to this show. Oh, no, I, t- I already told him the story. When he when we turned the truck, he goes, all right. I, he goes, thanks again for the truck. I go, you're not going to believe what happened, that I left this clip in there. And he was like, oh, no, I'm so glad I didn't get pulled over. <laughs> yeah, there was a, there was a story uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, this, this woman, I guess she had gotten robbed, and she went into Philadelphia, and she got a permit to carry a handgun, and then she was over in Jersey. She got pulled over. She got arrested. And um, she was in jail 45 days before, um, yeah. uh, what's his name, uh, the, the, the last governor of New Jersey, what was his name, Chris Christie. Chris Christie pardoned her. Cause she yeah, had could you imagine kids. Murphy doing that? Huh? Could you imagine if Mur- Murphy doing that? Well, Murphy certainly wouldn't pardon me. No. Yeah, not no. after those ads we ran on that <laughs> other radio station. <laughs> but, uh, Definitely not. <laughs> but this woman had uh, four kids, a single mother. She was in prison for 45 days, and Chris Christie pardoned her. So this is an odd one. We have a caller um, in Delaware named Jason, and he actually says he wants to say hi to us. I'm kind of worried about that, but let's pull him on. What's going on, Jason? Larry, what's up? I'm from high school. Brother Jason from high school. You made us coffee can lights for our band. You've come a long way, my friend. Oh, my goodness. I know who you are. That's hysterical. Wow. It is wow, so, so this, this is pretty wild. Bro. This is a blast I see you all the past. time. I love you on the internet. You're fantastic. But I'm so proud of you, man, because from coffee can lights to uh, <laughs> investing school, you're, you're brilliant. You're a book writer. You're everything, man. I love you, man. You're really cool. How come you never gave and me I miss a coffee you, Larry, can so light? It's nice to see you doing well. What am I, chop liver? You couldn't make me a coffee can so, light? So, so J- Jason, you have to take you have to come by here and take a look at the studio. You'd actually get a kick out of it, knowing you know. Because so, let me tell you a story about the coffee can lights. So here, here's what happened. So there was a band. <laughs> so I was good friends with I was good friends with you know uh, my my best friend was named Steve. He had a band, and Jason was the you were the guitar player, right? I was. It was a two man yeah. band. We won but, yeah, right. uh, the high school battle of the bands, just me and Steve. Yeah, right. And drummer Steve was and guitar an aw- player. Awesome drummer. Yeah. Uh, awesome. One of the best. Cal- yeah, exactly. Right. So, 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 um, you know, you know, I'm friends with these guys. I was doing the audio, but I also made like lights. So I took coffee cans and I put light bulbs in there, you know, with sockets. And I had this switch panel that I built on the f- on the floor, and I was able to you change the lights. A switch panel. And, and, right. And it looked like and it looked like a, a light show. And it was it was really awesome because I was able to quick, 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 quickly uh, switch the lights on and off. And it was it looked like we were at a concert when we when we used to do this. And you know, it cost us just a few bucks to put it together. But I remember how you surprised us with it. You, you <laughs> didn't even tell us what you were doing, and then you just showed up at the garage one day and said, "Let's put this on." <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> well, dude, hey, so you're, you're anyway, in Delaware now? I'm in Delaware now. I used to be in Seattle. I just moved over here yeah. and uh, I'm making my living as a musician, my friend. Still to this day. That's awesome, man. You know what you need to do? You need to stop by here one day. Reach out to me. Um, 
call this number. Call uh, call the uh, 855-939-1137, the number you called. Call it in a couple of days, and I'll, I'll answer the phone, hopefully, and we'll set up a time to get together because yeah. that's awesome, man. Th- and thanks for calling, man. I really appreciate it. You just brought me bad down memory lane. Man, I'm so proud of you. It's so nice to see you doing your thing, and you're still exactly the same as high school, man. Your personality, your enthusiasm, your laughter, everything is the same. You rock, man. Talk to you soon, I just, all right? ha- I just have less hair. That's all. <laughs> okay, man. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, man. Thanks. <laughs> All right, that was interesting. <laughs> All right, so we got another question to hit up. So, does investor schooling partner with students? Of course, investor schooling partners with students. So, we have a couple of programs that allow you to partner with us. But look, here's the deal: if you're a student and you have a really good deal and you need help with it, of course, we're going to help you with it. And at the same time, we're going to partner with you. We had one student. This was like my favorite deal that we did with a student so far, where we. Where he made in his cut, he made thirty two thousand dollars on this on this deal because we partnered with him. He it was a little bit of a tough deal. It was a little complicated. It had and had seller financing, and it kind of was like a seller finance wholesale deal. A kind of kind of interesting deal. And we put it together, and sure enough, he made over thirty two thousand dollars. He says it was less than I'm sorry, it was more than a half a year's salary, normal salary for him, and he pro- he probably put in about six hours of work on it. So, yeah, absolutely, we're going to partner with students. We're going to do it all the time. Yeah, well, that's one of the funnest things about investor schooling. So people are constantly coming here and talking to us about deals that they found. And sometimes we will do those deals with the students. So imagine if uh, you join investor schooling, you come to one of our free classes on Thursday night, this Thursday night at 7 o'clock, as a matter of fact, is our next one. And if you came to a free class... Possibly you find yourself a deal before you've even joined the school. It's something that we can help you with immediately. We can help you evaluate it. We can help you raise the money for it. We have a student here named Jamie who just got her first house under contract. She got a grant to uh, buy the house, so she's going to have to be able to – she's going to be able to buy it with very little of her own money. And uh, we got an accountant to help her with some – previous tax returns that had to be quickly put together. We got all that part done, and now we're just waiting for the big day. Celebrate good times. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, that's exactly Very right. exciting to buy your first house. It, it is pretty exciting, right. actually. It's pretty exciting to do everything that we do. I, listen, you, you come to Investor School. I'm telling you right now, you know, it's funny. Jason said my enthusiasm. That's exactly what we are. Phil and I have that kind of enthusiasm. We have such – we get such a kick out of our students being successful. We actually had, we have these big checks that we stand up and we, ha- we talk about uh, when, when the students do something really amazing. We stand up. We give them a big check. They all take pictures of it. If you go on Facebook Live, we're actually, if you go to the Investor Schooling Google page, you'll see the big checks up there as well. By the way, you know that we now have 95 five-star reviews? 95 five-star reviews. We actually have – we've accomplished something that I thought was amazing. We can't – we, we, it's just amazing. Five-star reviews, 95. I was looking up Tesla recently. They only have 91 five-star reviews. There you go. And our, our stock price is almost as high as theirs. <laughs> okay. So we're going to go to a, a short break. And when we come back, we're going to give you our stock option picks of the week. That's right. You can use them for stocks. You can use them for options. We prefer you come here and learn about options. And you'll make a lot more money because of the leverage. But uh, we're going to be back in two minutes, and we're going to give you our stock option picks of the week. Hi, I'm Phil Falcone from Investorschooling.com. I'm inviting you to a complimentary class in Langhorn this Thursday night at 7 p.m. I will teach you how to buy ugly houses and make them beautiful. As a bonus, we will also teach you stock option investing. So get your butt to this meeting, 7 p.m. this Thursday night, Langhorn, 215-876-3002, investorschooling.com. Hey, everybody, it's Larry Sinus from investorschooling.com. You heard my partner, Phil Falcone, tell you why you should be there this Thursday night to learn about real estate investing and learn about stock options trading. We're telling you right now, you will make more money than you've ever made in your entire life if you learn these two skills. Be there this Thursday night at 7 o'clock in our Langhorn headquarters. Go to Investorschooling.com. Pull over right now. Take out your phone and go to Investorschooling.com. RSVP right now. Investorschooling.com. See you Thursday. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. I got a question for you. 
What do you get for four ninety five a month at Executech Suites? You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone number. You get the fax number. You get the internet. You get two full-time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you, whether you're in the office, in your car, or at home sleeping on a couch. You get the conference rooms. You get the mailboxes. You get the printer, the copy, the scanner. You get the janitorial service, the utilities, and free coffee. I know it's hard to believe that you could get all those things for $495 a month. But it's true. 67 Buck Road in Huntington Valley, Executech Suites. Give us a call, 215-942-7701, 215-942-7701. Hey, everybody, it's Larry Sinus from InvestorSchooling.com. And I'm Phil Falcone from InvestorSchooling.com. Hey, what are we going to teach him this Thursday night, Phil? We're going to teach you how to invest in real estate so you can build a basis to get rich. And I promise I'm going to teach you stock options. So go to InvestorSchooling.com and RSVP right now. Right, Phil? We've been in this business for 30 years. We have amazing amounts of information to share with you. Get your butt to this meeting this Thursday night in Langhorn. InvestorSchooling.com. All right, all right, all right. Welcome back. Welcome back to Investor Schooling Live. Hey, we are here in Langhorn, and we are actually in our headquarters. And I'm telling you, you guys really want to come here and take a look at the studio. It's kind of cool. But if you want to call in right now with any questions, you can call in at 855-939-1137. And if you're an old friend and you want to call because you heard me on the radio and think I'm famous, that's cool too. 855-939-1137. Call in right now. And ask us your questions because we love it when people ask questions. You want to ask us questions about real estate. You want to ask us questions about stock options. We promise you we're going to answer them. And if you happen to be listening to a replay of the show or on one of our affiliate stations that were not live, if you call that number, 855-939-1137, we will be able to answer it and we will be able to answer your question. Most likely, I will even answer that call because I try to monitor that call. I want to make sure that you guys can be able to have your questions answered. So what do we want to talk about, Phil? We want to go into some stock option plays? Yeah, let's talk about the picks you like for this week coming up. Bum, bum, bum. It's serious earnings time. Serious earnings time. And usually earnings is when we make the most money. But it's been ugly, man. El earnings have been ugly this, uh, this month. And I kind of expected it. But we're going to see. So Facebook earnings is this week. It's at the end of the week. And I believe – look. Facebook always crushes earnings. They always crush earnings. I don't know if the stock's going to go up or down. That's the problem. So we sent out a text the other day. We said if, if Facebook went below 230 to buy it, a bunch of us bought it. Now, I'm hoping that it hits 240 before earnings. If it hits 240 before earnings, we're out. We'll just take our money and run because I, it's, not, it's not worth it for us to take the risk over earnings. However, if it doesn't make it and we, and we uh, have to hold it through earnings, the other thing that's been interesting about Facebook is I've noticed this about every single earnings period in the last, I don't know, maybe four or five earnings periods where the stock actually goes down right after earnings period and then goes back up. So the good news is if we miss it, hopefully it repeats the pattern and we get the same thing. I also think Facebook is way undervalued. It's sitting there at 230, 240 right now. It hit a, it hit a high of 250 a couple of weeks ago, and I think it's way undervalued. I think Facebook is a massive play right now. Uh, if Apple is in the, almost is ready to hit 400, it came pretty close, Facebook should be right behind it. I totally agree. They're totally different businesses. But Facebook is really the entire – people are using their iPhone on Apple to buy – I mean, so to, to look at Facebook. That's what they're doing with it. And if you're watching us on Facebook, you understand that that's obviously where you are right now. There's so many things going on on Facebook. The big problem with Facebook is Facebook has gotten caught in a political crossfire. And that's funny because, you know, we all know that Zuckerberg is a liberal, but Facebook is becoming a very conservative place for people to be, I don't know, sending out comments. And look, I, I'm very anti-mask. You guys know that. So if you see my stuff on Facebook, you see that I'm talking about anti-mask stuff all the time. And I've gotten my – it's my own political thing going on there. So it's going to have a problem. They, Facebook may have a problem with with being politically correct for some investors. And that might be what's holding holding it back right now. I'm still a big believer in some of the bank stocks right now. So Wells Fargo – Wells Fargo is inching up. I still think Wells Fargo has a big chance. I think I mentioned this the other day that I thought was interesting about Wells Fargo. We had said that the PPP loans – Wells Fargo and all the other banks were going to get 5% commission for the PPP loans. 
when the earnings came, no one talked about this. No one talked about the revenue from the PPP loans, which kind of surprised me. I, not necessarily that the stock should go up or down based on that, but I was surprised that no one talked about it, which makes me believe one or two things. One is they kind of held that information back because they didn't want to talk about how great it was, and they didn't want the stock to go up yet, which is possible. You'd be surprised at how people can manipulate stocks without manipulating stocks. The other thing it could be is they didn't get the money yet. Maybe the government didn't give them the money yet. Now, if the government didn't give them the money yet, that's fantastic news because it means that the next earnings it is going to be fantastic for Wells Fargo and Bank of America. Here's another thing that you should know about bank stocks right now. Whether you believe it or not, refinancing is on fire right now. Every mortgage guy I talk to is telling me how they can't stay on top of the fact that there are so many refinances right now. Now, that's where... Banks make a lot of money in a refinance. They make their fees on a refinance, which is a great time. And then the other thing, I also still, by the housing market is insane. So the housing market for new for new buyers is also insane too. So the the, the, the banks are also going to do really well. I also don't believe we're going to hit the recession that everyone thought we were going to hit. I had talked about this for the last few weeks and said that what the banks did was perfect. It was beautiful. They prevented... I believe they prevented a recession to the point where it actually is going to be the opposite problem where we're going to have hyper, not hyperinflation, but inflation on houses that is going to make it go nuts. I mean, I'm watching some of my properties going, holy cow, that property is now worth $300,000 this year. It was worth two hundred thirty. I can't believe it's worth 300000 right now. And that's what's happening right now to some of the properties out there. So bank stocks are going to rock. The question is, will they rock in time? We have, we're holding some options to January, and January is a good time to hold these options to because I really believe that everything's going to come over. Look, if, if we're right, and I believe we really are, that coronavirus is going to suddenly disappear in November because the voting virus will – I'm sorry, the coronavirus will be gone, yeah. and that will make it go away, and hopefully everything will be back to normal soon or soon enough. That's the most likely scenario, and that will make banks, of course, come back. Just all, The whole, whole stock market will come back. And that, w that will be great. It's a shame that, that banks and travel stocks have to be beat up for this political move that I believe is being made by, uh, by liberals and some of the other – and some of, uh, even, even in some of the other countries, it's the same exact thing. It's funny how every country that doesn't like us or doesn't like Trump is, is, uh, is claiming more and more cases. But I don't want to get into that because that's my political rant, and we're not going to do that at the, at the moment. But that also brings me to uh, airline stocks and cruise stocks. Now, American Airlines is roughly around 12, which is a fantastic price. Look, here, here, here's my – actually, I'm a little concerned about the stock options play that I'm in with it. Uh, I have options to, to, uh, to January, and I think they'll be fine. I think I'll make money on them. I think I'll even make money on them shortly. However, if you really want to take some money, if you have, like, I don't know, some money and you were thinking about a stock to buy, buy American Airlines, buy Carnival Cruise Lines, buy Royal Caribbean – Put it in a drawer, and in about two years from now, these stocks will be double or triple what they are right now. Matter of fact, I believe that American Airlines in three years will probably be at 25, 30, and you'll be very, very happy that you bought it and just held on to it. It's it's a fine play. If you make you double your money in a year or two, who cares, right? So that's actually a great. It's it's better than doubling your money in 10 years of real estate, right, Phil? So so that would be that would be what I would do with uh, American Airlines stock. Oh, I don't know. You have any anything else that you any any or, or the top of your head, Phil, that you want me to talk about? Yeah, I I, I uh, sold my American Airlines stock for about a three hundred dollar profit. It, it it popped one of the days uh, shortly after we all bought it, and I just I just decided to change out of it. Uh, Wells Fargo, I was in it, made money off of it. I just bought Facebook on Friday, and I do own uh, some very long shares on. On CCL. Oh, and, and by the way, <clears throat> I have been telling our students for the last two years, I've been telling my friends for the last five years to buy silver, the physical metal. Wow, silver hit 23 the other day. That is amazing to me. So the physical metal, and here's the reason why I was telling buy, people to buy the physical metal. Not only is it, is it a good investment, because it happens to be a good investment, but the physical metal is also important because if there's ever a situation where money – is becoming unusable, which isn't that weird that it actually is becoming unusable? That it you is. Have to, everything is going to have to be on credit cards. If they actually, what they've done the last four months is amazing to me. They've advanced all of the, all of the conspiracy theories and 
science fiction novels, they only advance them in four months, which is amazing. So the the um, money is becoming actually becoming not <laughs> usable. So what what might happen too eventually is you know your credit card might even be attached. I, I actually saw a meme today which I thought was was really appropriate. You know your credit card was declined because you haven't had a COVID um, uh, you know, vaccine. Which look is that going to happen? Probably not. But it actually makes some sense where all of a sudden your credit card is shut off and you need to go buy milk. And, and you can't use money anymore because money doesn't work anymore, right? Exactly. So Kendall says silver and gold is real money, and that's exactly right. Kendall's on uh, on Facebook Live uh, watching watching us now and commenting. And it is. It's real money. And here's what I, why I told people to get the coins. So you get the coins and not gold. Gold is a really good idea. It's fine. It's a great investment. You want to buy gold coins. But you, if you buy one ounce of gold, it's going to cost you, I don't know, 1800 bucks right now, 1900 bucks right now. But one ounce of silver... Again, it's twenty three dollars, and if you if, if I had to go buy milk or bread, I can exchange my. Tw I realize it's twenty three dollars, but I can exchange my one coin of silver for a loaf of bread, for a loaf of milk, for, I mean, for, for a gallon of milk, and I can exchange that, and I could give it to him. But if it gold, gold is worth too much money. To ha I mean, how do I get change back? You can't get change back from that. So I like silver as a play. I also like the idea that silver is more likely to double than gold. So right now, silver, even today, right now, silver is at 25. It's a lot easier for 25 to go to 50 than it is for gold to go from 2,000 to 4,000. So I, that's another reason why I like silver. I actually collect the physical metal. I actually get it on eBay. And the weird part is I get it on eBay from a couple of reputable people on eBay. And when I get on eBay, I get to use my PayPal credit and buy it with six months free financing. And the other day, I actually bought some. And by the time I got it, I had paid less for it than when it came, than it was worth when it came. So, again, another reason to buy silver. And I've been telling our students to buy silver, buy at least 10 ounces of silver every month. doesn't matter what price. Just buy 10 ounces of silver and put it in a, put it in a safe or somewhere. What's up, Phil? Okay, so let's put that in a nutshell. Buy silver. Buy Facebook. Buy Wells Fargo. <laughs> buy American Airlines. And get your butt to Investor Schooling this Thursday night at 7 p.m. Just go to InvestorSchooling.com, put your name and email address in, and you will be invited to a free class. So I want to put a thanks out there to our producer, John Cole, for helping us out today. If you're interested in becoming a sponsor on our radio shows, email us, info at InvestorSchooling.com. That's info at InvestorSchooling.com. We will see you here next week at Investor Schooling Live, 3 p.m. every Sunday and 2 p.m. on Saturday. Don't forget to visit InvestorSchooling.com for your free complimentary class this Thursday night at 7 p.m. on real estate investing and stock option investing. We promise to make it exciting and interesting for you to come to Investor Schooling. You can also check out our buyerslist.com for the deals that we put out there. Sometimes we put out real estate deals on that list. We also have an investor brokerage. If you want to hang your license somewhere and be able to do investing deals free of worry that your broker is going to yell at you, we won't do it here. We support real estate investors. So we'll see you Thursday night at 7 p.m. The address is 109 Corporate Drive, Langhorne, Pennsylvania. 108. Did you really say 109? Wow. 108 Corporate Drive, Langhorne, Pennsylvania, <laughs> 19047, <laughs> investorschooling.com. You got anything else you want to say, Larry? You got That's it, man. I'm like so excited that we had an awesome show today. And it started off slow, but it got really good, really good. Anyway, John, I think you have it now. We are out of here. Take care, man. All right. We out of here. <laughs>